She is an artist, an AI researcher, uh, an educator based in Puebla, Mexico, and her interests lie in AR for artwork, public art, online education. She has taught at RISD, presented her AI research at the 2019 Neuro IPS workshop on creativity and has exhibited in Vancouver, in Seattle, and Boston. And she's an alumni of the School of Poetic Computation as well as MIT. So as a reminder, we, we're not going to have a QA, and a uh, but there will be uh, questions if there is time. Leah, however, I believe you've been, you're going to participate in the AMA on Twitter after yep. your session? Okay, yeah, I'll be available on Twitter afterwards for questions. Okay. Excellent. And uh, I will put on our chat um, a link to Leah's Patreon page as well. And so before we get started, uh, Leah, just asking your permission that we can do screenshots of, of your session for social media. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. My permission. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. So take it away. Okay, cool. Um, let me share my screen, share my slides. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, first I want to give thanks to, to Mia and Maya and Tristy and all the organizers for this. I'm really, yeah, I, I acknowledge all of the, the work and labor that you guys have been putting in and organizing this. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for putting all of this together. I really appreciate it. Um, so my workshop today is going to be teaching you guys how to make art with machine learning. I want to really, really stress from the get-go that this is going to be an interactive workshop, meaning um, I'm not just going to talk to you for an hour. I will need your active participation in this workshop. Um, and it might be a little bit hard because of the Zoom webinar format, but I think we'll find a way to make it work. What you will leave with today from this workshop is you're going to have two to three new images that you've made using machine learning and also new knowledge of machine learning and how it all works. Um, behind the scenes. And once again, what I will need from you in exchange for that is your active participation during this workshop. Um, so that will bring us to our first bit of participation for this workshop. We're going to do introductions and I'm going to find out who is in my workshop and you're going to figure out who is making art with you in this workshop. So here, I'm gonna actually post the link to the slides in the chat. And I literally want you guys to open up that link and go into Google Slides and edit this slide with your name, your pronouns, your city, and your social links. Just so I can get an idea of like who's in the room, who's participating, who's making art. And cool, we have Hesse in the room. And if there is not enough space on this slide, I made a couple of overflow slides as well. Um, and my reason for doing this is my general approach of how I want this workshop to flow is I wanna make sure we're all like on the coding train together and on the bus. And I don't want people to be left behind. So having a good read on like, okay, we have 10 people in the room um, will help me in gauging whether we should move on to the next step or whether we, should, um, whether we should take some more time and explain and work out some kinks in the current step. Cool, we have people from all over, from Berkeley, California, South Africa, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Turkey, Toronto, Mountain View, amazing. Cool, it looks like we have um, maybe about about 15 people in the room. Cool. Thank you guys. It's really cool to see all of this, like the slide being, being filled in in real time. Cool. Ginger. Oh, I know Ginger has a session right after this. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit about AI generated, different types of AI generated art. And she's generated poetry with AI. Cool. Thank you all for doing that. And yeah, feel free to like come back to the slide because you guys have access to these slides. Um, feel free to come back here and check out who your classmates are in this class. Nice. From Australia, cool. 
And I'll just, yeah, wait till you guys are done until I see the little cursors stop moving. Amazing. Yeah, I'll take some time after this to look into your, your social links and find out who is in my workshop. That's really cool. Okay, amazing. So we have about more than 20 people in the room, like 22. Okay, this is gonna be a, a jam-packed slide deck because later on, each of you will be making your own slide in the slide deck with the art that you've made. Okay. Cool, thank you all for participating in that and like taking the leap in opening up the slides and editing. We'll have more of that later on. Um, but yeah, we've just done intros of who's in the room. And a little intro of me is I'm Leah Coleman, as you probably know. The three most important things to me are art, AI, and education, especially when it is education of other people in making art with AI. That kind of checks all the boxes. Um, mm -hmm. And I've linked my Patreon, my Twitter, and my IG. And these classes or these images you see up here, these are parts of, these are images for a couple of classes that Derek Schultz and I co-teach. We have some new classes in January and February, and we have a whole slew of resources already posted online, publicly available for free on YouTube and on our website to help, like, help anybody that wants to create using machine learning have access to those resources. And we've been pretty busy this year teaching a bunch of classes. Um, our most recent students had, they did a live stream online of their final projects. And I'm just leaving this link here in case you, for you, for you guys to review later, if you want to see like, okay, what would I be able to make at the end of five weeks? Um, and yeah, I am like the biggest fan of my students' work. I think all of my students' work is amazing and really, really cool. but I'll leave that for you guys to review later. You're wondering like how on earth did all of these images come to be? That was one of my students talking. Um, but yeah, let me back up and describe what AI artwork is um, because I don't think it's, it's a very small field and not a lot, it's not very well known what AI art is. Um, but how I define AI art is it's just art that is made using the tool of machine learning or AI. Um, it's just art in general that's used using this specific technique or tool of machine learning or AI. And because it's just art in general, it can take a variety of different mediums since art comes from a variety of different mediums. For example, it could be images that are created by an AI video. It could be music. There's a, there's a whole field of um, music that is generated with an AI poetry, which Ginger Chen will talk about after my session, and performance. The mediums that I primarily work with are images and video. And so that's what we'll mainly be focusing on today. Um, this is a piece of AI artwork that I made. I'll just let it play. Was a piece of work that I made um, training a specific type of model. Um, this model or technique was is called Stalgian 2, but that's not super important for this session. Um, I'm just trying to give you guys a quick overview of like pieces of AR artwork and what AI artwork generally looks like. And in the creation of this piece, what I did to actually create this piece was I collected a lot of images of flowers. I collected 14,000 of them and then trained a model on them. And then once that model is trained after about two or three days, um, it was able to produce this, this thing. Um, and moving on to some other types of AI artwork. 
I'll let this play as well. This was a, a different kind of model, a different technique, a different machine learning technique um, in which I input a video and this was the output of the model. I also had a couple of students. This, this is my students work from RISD, the Rhode Island School of Design. And this is an example where they used machine learning to create textures and then took that, like the output of the machine learning model and then put that inside of another tool, an animation tool to create this. And this is the result of some summer research that they did. So machine learning, like the output of machine learning model isn't just like the output and that's your final output. You can always like put it inside of something else. You can use it as a texture in something else. This other artist, um, Kishi Yuma is an artist that I'm really inspired by. He is an AI artist based in Japan. And I interviewed him um, a couple months ago about his process, what he thinks about the relationship between artwork and artificial intelligence, why he does it. And it's generally like a good article if you wanna get an overview of AI artwork and how artists are thinking about using AI in their artwork. Derek Schultz, who is uh, the teacher that I teach the classes with, he generally makes these really meditative flowering botanical illustrations. Esteban Salgado is a former student of mine. And I'm gonna turn the volume down. He generally makes um, these pretty meditative um, these pretty meditative AI blobs uh, set to music and they're meant to be pretty calming and meditative. And these are all just generated with an AI. And so, yeah, that was a general overview of works of AI using all like a slew of very, uh, using a slew of all these different techniques, including like Stalgan, other types of models. The model that I will be showing you guys how to use today it's called style transfer. And the reason why I picked this to focus on for like your first, your first foray into making AI artwork is because it's usually like the entry point for people where they're like, oh yeah, I did my first, I ran my first, um, my first collab notebook and I did style transfer. It's generally a good, a good entry point for beginners. So I'm gonna show you guys some I'm going to show you guys some examples of artwork made with this particular technique of style transfer. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go ahead and make our own. So what style transfer is, is you're, you take a style. So in this case, the style is, you know, these dots, and then they're transferred onto something else. In this case, they're transferred onto a video. And there's this artist, Lulu XXX who makes a lot of these videos where she transfers a style onto them. And there's a lot more of her work linked here. This is another one of Derek's pieces where he has taken this image, this static image of a fish, and then transferred this rainbow fluid texture on top of it to create this piece. And these are some more examples. These are static images. We'll be working with static images today um, video is a little harder and that can be like your next step. Um, but these were flowers, images of flowers originally, and then a style of, you know, this rainbow texture was transferred onto them. And in this as well, this was originally a flower image and then had another texture transferred onto it, on top of it. And so, what is this technique called style transfer? I've shown you guys some examples of it, um, but like what is actually going on? So what is happening during style transfer is you have two images. You have this image, which is your content image is what it's called and in a style image. In this case, it's Starry Night. And the aim of the style transfer model is to take these two images and then output 
an image which is the same same content as the content image, but in the style of the style image. And once you have a model that that can do style transfer, you can feed it in any number of images or any uh, any types of images. So in this case, we're keeping the content image the same. We're using the same content of the lion, but we're using different style images. So here we can see that we're using this painting by Matisse as the style. We're using the great wave here as a style and we get output a lion made of waves, which is really cool. And so this technique, the history of this technique is that it first was published in 2015 in this paper. The paper is linked right here if you want to like dig into it and then see the actual uh, the, te the actual technical paper. Um, so style transfer is like fairly old. It came out five years ago in 2015. And since then there have been various other papers that have been released to make improvements or variations based on the original, the original idea. This is a screenshot from the original paper down here. Um, and in the original paper, they had this image of these houses and they have transferred these different textures onto it, like Edward Munch's The Scream and Starry Night. And this, as you can see, this looks, it looks pretty good. It looks like Starry Night. And yeah, so how do we use style transfer? Like I said, you have two images. You have a content image and you have a style image. And they go through this model, which is a black box for all intents and purposes right now. And then what is output is, you know, a lion in the style, in the style of Starry Night or um, whatever the content image is with the new style applied on top of it. And I'll go into a little more detail later about what this black box is and how, how it was, how it came to be like this perfect black box. Um, but yeah, what you need to know right now is that, that this black box is the style transfer model. And this model was trained and created by the researchers who wrote that paper. And that's why they wrote this paper because they were like, we found, or we, we trained this really, really great model and it's able to do this. It's able to take two images and then smush them together and output um, the content image with the new style on top of it. Yeah, you can think of this box as a computer program. Um, and the only thing different about this from a regular computer program is that it's a, it's been trained. It's been like, uh, it's been trained over the course of a couple days and modified to be like the best program for this task. Um, so yeah, like I said, there, when you're thinking about a machine learning model, um, it's generally helpful to think about what your inputs are and what your output is. So in this case, our inputs are our two images and our output is one image, which is the content image with the style applied to it. So here's a concrete example with actual images. The content is me and the style is this painting by Kandinsky. And it goes through the model. We have these two inputs and one output of an image. And yeah, like I said, where did this magical box come from? Um, it came from the, the researchers or the people that wrote the paper. They spent a lot of time tweaking the parameters, the architecture of this computer program. And um, what actually happens during the process of training, which is essentially tweaking this program to make it like the best program to do the style transfer is, um, it's an automatic process. That's the process of machine learning. We can imagine we have this box and it's getting modified every, every single step. At the very beginning of training, it's, this program is really, really dumb. And if you give it Mona Lisa and Starry Night, it'll just spit out noise. Um, and then what happens during the process of training is every iteration or every loop it checks like, okay, is my output, does my output look like my content image? No, does my output image look similar in texture to my style image? No. And then within the model itself, 
it has something that's like akin to a compass and it tells us it tells it given like how far off it is it tells it which direction it needs to tweak its numbers in um, and for those of you who might have some experience that's called the loss function um, but i don't want to get too much into the weeds right now um, but yeah it's the training is an iterative process and so as um, as it you know checks its output and it's like oh i need to make these modifications i need to step and alter my parameters, alter my numbers in this direction, it gets slightly better. And through the course of many, many iterations, it gets to a result that's that's like acceptable to us. And so you can see here, it starts off as noise. And then through successive iterations, it gets more and more like looking like what we expect, like what we want. Um, and the whole process of training, that's a process that takes it takes a lot of resources it's a long process um and yeah is too too long of a process to cover in a one hour workshop um, but we do teach classes in training models as well um yeah but what you guys will be doing today is this this process where we already have this box set and it's good and we know it's good because it's been trained by somebody else. And we're going to just take new inputs and produce new outputs. OK, cool. Um, that brings us to the interactive half of this workshop today. We're going to do style transfer in this tool called Google Colab. Google Colab is um, it's a way for us to run code in our browsers. So you can just open up Chrome or open up Firefox or Safari or whatever browser you're using and run machine learning code. Um, and that it just, it's a, it's a tool that makes running machine learning code easy because you can run it from your browser and you don't need to like set up something on your laptop or figure out whether you have a powerful enough GPU to, to run this code. So yeah, okay, the steps we're gonna do today in the interactive portion is we're gonna run through four steps. The first step is I'm gonna give you code and you're gonna run through it as is, just to get you familiar with you know, how the Colab interface works, how to run cells. And yeah, once you're comfortable doing that, we're gonna switch, we're gonna switch the content image and the style image so you can figure out, so you can, um, find out how to alter different parameters in the code to be like, okay, I don't wanna see a line again. I want you to run the style transfer on an image of my face, for example. And then the third step is I'm gonna have you, I'm, I'm gonna like sort of let you guys free to go and find your own images. If you wanna like uh, search on Google images for a particular image you wanna do style transfer on you can also like pull up photo booth and then take a screenshot of your face and then do style transfer on your own face. And the fourth step is for those of you who are like, this is too easy. I sped through all these steps. There are at the bottom of the Colab notebook, there are a lot of different options um, where you can make um, tweaks to the process of style transfer, where you might be able to, you can like change different scales change colors and things like that. Um, but that's like for people who are done with everything. Okay, so the very first step is you just running through the code as is. So the first thing you're gonna do is I want each of you to make a slide for yourself. So this is like the original template slide. Um, so copy one for yourself, put your name at the top. And what we are going to do in this step is we're just gonna run style transfer on the image of the lion with this Kandinsky style. And then we should all, we should all get this, the, same, the same output image, which should look like this. But yeah, this is like, just to make sure we're all on the same page and that everyone is able to get through the first step. I'll give you guys a couple 
a couple seconds to make your own slide or a couple minutes to make your own slide. And then we'll all go over to the collab notebook together and do this. Yeah, once you've duplicated um, and made your own slide, click this link here to open the collab notebook. Once you open this up, something that's very, very important to do is make a copy for yourself um, because we don't wanna all be editing the same, the same notebook at the same time. That would be very, very crazy. Um, and things would like change underneath us. So the first thing you do is make a copy for yourself. You open up file, um, my language is in Spanish, but yours, it should be the same menu where you click file and then save a copy in drive. And that'll make, a, make your own copy of this entire notebook. So you can like edit things as you wish and not worry about um, modifying things for other people. Okay. And okay, let us go over to the collab notebook. Um, yeah, and if you need me to hold up, uh, please just say it in the chat like, oh, I'm not ready. Or can you wait a second? And or if you have any questions that come up, please just ask them in the chat and I'll and I'll answer them as I see them. Um, but I will assume that everybody has their own slide ready. We have a lot of slides for our 22 plus participants today. Um, so yeah, this is the notebook to do style transfer. Um, in the beginning, so this is the, the, the interface of Google Colab. Um, you have this thing on the left, which is a table of contents. Okay, we're waiting on my internet super slow, can't open the notebook yet. Okay. I will, yeah. In the meantime, I'll just explain like interface things. Um, okay, got it, nice. So the interface of Google Colab is on the left, you have this table of contents. You can imagine this is a notebook. It's called a notebook where it has like headings and different sections. So this is the table of contents and they're like different sections of the notebook. There is this little folder icon here. I like to keep mine on the folder icon um, because it lets me know what, what files I'm working with. And there is this little refresh icon here, which you should, you should use anytime um, you're expecting new files to pop up here. Okay, we're reading on Lisa as well. Mine still hasn't downloaded either. Okay. I'll go, I'll wait up and I'll go slow. In the meantime, I'll explain what these cells do. Um, each of these is called a cell. And each one of them contains some code. The, the first couple cells are just installing some libraries that we're gonna be using to do the actual style transfer. So this first cell is installing TensorFlow, which is just a machine learning library. And to run a cell, there's this, you hover over this little play button and press play. And it should say, the little mouse over will say like execute cell and you press play and only press it once. And the output of the command like will be printed out here and as you can see now, this cell, it says, it has a one right here. The overall layout of a collab notebook is there'll be cells and the cells are run. You can run the cells in a particular order and it'll keep track of what order you've run them with the little number right there. Okay, Lisa, I will, I'll go ahead. Thank you. Um, this second cell is for installing the actual library to do the style transfer. 
is this library called NeuralStyle TF. The TF stands for TensorFlow, which we just installed. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna run this second cell as well and only press this once. Generally, um, I'm just highlighting the importance of pressing this only once because this is literally downloading a file and putting it here. And so if you press it like two times or three times, you'll be downloading more folders of exactly the same folder. And you only need it, only need it once. And this might take a little while. It's downloading, um, downloading some files, including a particular machine learning model. Machine learning models in general are pretty, pretty heavy, pretty big. So anything, anytime you're working with machine learning, it'll take like things might take like 30 seconds to a minute to run, which yeah, generally when people are thinking about computers, they're like, this is running so fast, but in terms of machine learning, it'll take on the order of like minutes. Okay, so on your left side, you should have this neural style TF folder now. If it doesn't show up, I would click this refresh and it should pop up. Um, let me know in the chat if it doesn't. And this command right here, this is a command to do the actual style transfer. There is a script called neuralstyle.py, pi meaning a Python file. And here's where we specify what the content image is. So here we're specifying we want the lion as the content image. And where the content images are stored is here, if we go into the folder, image input, we can see there's lion. And if we double click it here, there's the image of the lion. And there are other, other content images we can use as well. But for now, we're gonna just stick with what's written here with lion.jpg. Here as well, we have an option to specify our style image. Um, here we're choosing kandinsky.jpg and all of the styles are, all of the style images are stored here in this folder, the styles folder. And we see that kandinsky is right here. And that is the style image we're gonna be running with. And yeah, it's as simple as that. All we need to do is run the cell and it will do the style transfer of the Kandinsky image on top of the line image. And we can see it's running, the computer's thinking. This might take a couple minutes just because, yeah, machine learning is, is a slow process. At the very end, you'll know it's done because it'll tell you how long the complete command took. At the bottom, when it's done, it'll print single image elapsed time and then some big number of like how many seconds it took. And when this is done, we also see that here it's created this new folder that we didn't have before called image output. And this is where, when it's done, the, the new resultant image will be saved. But for now it's empty because it's still thinking. Yeah, this will take some time. We can hang around. And then once it's done, the images will pop up here and we can check out what they look like. I've already run this with uh, an image I took earlier today of my face or a screenshot from Zoom. Um, and this cell is a way you can display all the images. If you don't want to, if you don't want to run the cell, or if you want to just, if you want an alternative way to see images, you can also just double click on them, and that's super easy. Um, but yeah, this is what happened earlier when I ran the style transfer on the image of my face, and it output this. And pretty soon, you guys will have images like this. Looks like Loren is good. Oh yeah, it is a little tricky to have both this up and zoom up 
and the size of. Um, and then once once that's done, like you can see, like machine learning is slow; it takes minutes. Um, once that's done, what I want you guys to do is copy, right click and copy your resultant image, which should look like the lion from before. And then place your result image here. So I think if like if I were Ginger and I was and I already ran this, I would paste it and put it here. But yeah, it shouldn't look like this. It should look like this, the lion. Cool. It looks like Angel's done. A couple people are done already. Nice. Yeah, so we can see this is done because it said single image elapsed time. Nice, and if we refresh this, we'll get new images right here. Content, this image output.png is the image output. We copy that and put that over in our slide. And yeah. Oh. Cool. You see images coming in. Awesome. Yeah. In the meantime, if you guys have questions, you can put them in the chat. Anything about like machine learning in general, different kinds of models, how style transfer works. Yeah, and if you're like already done with this and this is, um, and you're like, this is, this is too easy, um, you can go down here and review these style transfer options. There are a lot of different options you can do with style transfer. Um, you can put in multiple style images. Like here, we specified both Starry Night and Kandinsky. And say we want 10% Kandinsky and 90% Starry Night. Um, and you can also do other things as well, such as style scale, where you use different scales of the style image on your original content image. But yeah, if you use a smaller scale, you, you get this really texturized output. And if you use like a larger scale, it's generally like these larger features. Um, a question. I think I missed the part you explained how we can add different inputs, e.g. our own image as the first input. Okay, yeah, we will get to that. That is step three. We, we are we're taking baby steps one at a time. Oh, no problem. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody, everybody is good with the code as is. Yeah, already getting, getting ahead of things. That's good. Okay. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the second step. If you guys are ready, um, the second step is just changing what the style image is. So if we go back, we have available to us all of these different style images. We have this seated nude, starry night. We have a shipwreck, I think, and Matisse, the scream. So first, before we use our own images, um, I'm going to show you how to just modify with a different style image. If I just go back to where we were here, um, you can take, like, let's say we wanted to do the woman with the hat, Matisse. Um, one thing, we can type woman dash with dash hat dash Matisse. Um, something that I like to do, which is a little faster, is hover over this, click the dots, and then click copy path. 
And then if you copy the path, you can just control paste. And that is the path, like the pointer to that image. And then we can run that again. And yeah, after that is done, as before, make your, make your own slide here. Let me make a template for you guys. Boop. Your name. Um, make a slide for yourself and then put, uh, put the whatever style image you chose and put it here and then place the result image that you were able to create there. Yeah, we're just taking things very, very slowly. So you guys can get familiar with, um, with changing arguments. So here we're changing the, the style images argument for this command. And we play the waiting game again. Yeah. The next step that we're going to do after this is we're going to change the content image. So we're not going to work with this line anymore. We're going to pick something different. We have starry night. Um, and the reason why we're using Colab, um, like I said, it's a really useful tool. Um, generally, a lot of people that are doing doing machine learning um, will usually like make a quick Colab notebook and then share it with someone else. The really nice thing about Colab is um, it, it allows us to have access to GPUs. Um, Google is allowing us to use their, their GPUs. Like if we go, um, there is a, I can't find it now, but um, under the hood, under this entire notebook, uh, Google is letting us use GPUs, which you know, my laptop doesn't have a great GPU. So it's nice that we can run this in the browser and have access to, to these GPUs. So it looks like my mine is done. So let me refresh this and check out this image output. And yeah, so we have this lion with in the style of Matisse. And if I were one of you participants, I would put that. Oh, Ginger has a Question, running into an issue, Python 3 can't open file, no such file or directory. Um, let me see, were you able to do the first one? Yes. Um, and then, did you run any other, did you happen to run any of the other cells besides um, besides this one. Like we're only only changing things in here. Um, I think that could have possibly happened if you ran this cell again. Um, yeah. One thing. Hmm. Oh, if you are trying to restart the entire thing, um, at first, okay, before you restart, no, attendee one, double check your file names and file types. Uh, make sure you're doing PNG instead of 
or typing the right file extension. Um, Ginger, if you want to restart, you can go here and then click um, reestablish uh, factory settings in the environment of execution, and that'll restart the entire thing. Um, but one thing that might, might be a quick fix is if you um, replace this neurostyle.py with maybe the full route to it, because maybe it can't find it. So if you find neural, your neural style here and then copy the path and then paste that there, that might help. If that doesn't help, then I would recommend just restarting it, um, but try this first. Okay, nice, good to go. Let's check back and see how we're doing. Nice, we have Matisse, we have Starry Night. Oh, that sounds cool. Nice, you were able to upload your own image. Um, the next step is us using a different content image. Pretty straightforward now that you've used your own style image. Um, in this case, we're just replacing the content image with a different image from this image input folder. So you can, there's a face, I don't know who that is. Um, you can pick the Taj Mahal. You can pick these buildings from the original paper, the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and yeah, what you would change here is you would just change this content image to the name of one of these images here. Nice. Yeah. And then the natural next step is for you guys to use your own images, which I see, I already see a lot of you guys doing, um, which is really awesome. And now let me actually formally describe how to upload your own images. Um, like I said, the all of the content images are stored in here. So if you want to like run it on an image of your own face as the content, you would click this little upload button here and then pick, I think I have a screenshot of my face here. And then now this is, this is uploaded. Um, one thing that's sort of important with these is um, having a name with spaces in it is, it, it gets a little troublesome. So I'd recommend renaming, renaming uh, your files to names without spaces. So now that I have my new image uploaded, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it into, um, drag it into the folder. Where did that go? my face.png and I want to and I want to put it in I want to put it in this folder. This is yeah. Where is it? Oh, I don't know where that went. Um, but eventually yeah you want it you want to upload it to this folder image input. Let me try that again. Yeah, it might be easier if I close these so I can just drag it over. And I'm gonna rename it to a name without spaces. Rename to my face dot PNG. Okay, yep. Oh, it was because I already had it in there. Um, Myface.png. And now that this is in our content images folder, I can go in here and then be like myface.png. 
And that's how you will run style transfer on your own custom image, maybe of your face, maybe of something else. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, that's really cool. I love this. It's, it looks like, I don't know, like a futuristic, futuristic world. Someone ran it on their cat or some cat and the cat became kind of scary looking. <laughs> nice. Oh, this is beautiful. It looks like an actual painting. Yeah. Really glad that you guys are having fun with this and using your own images. This is also really pretty. I really, really love this. I love the colors that are here. Great job, guys. Wonderful. Okay. And I'll give you guys a I don't know, maybe five minutes or so to continue playing um, using different images. And then we'll, we can reconvene and wrap up after that. And I have some, some closing remarks regarding the fact that all of you guys now have just used machine learning and important things to think about. Um, in the meantime, yeah, for those of you who, you know, wanna continue exploring using different images, continue and by all means like go ahead make different things um, if you if you want to play with some more a little more advanced settings um, if you go down to multiple style images like I said you can input different you can input two styles um, and if you're inputting two styles it's important to tell it like I want 50% of each one, or I want like 90% of the second one and 10% of the first one. And that's the way you can mix two different styles. And then there's style scale. One, one nuance of the way we've run our code so far is um, you have two images. Um, what it does for the style image sort of automatically by default, just uh, a default of this library is that it makes sure that they're the same exact size and then does the style transfer. Um, but there is a setting to reduce the size of your style image to specify the level of detail you want. So this command, what this command does is it runs different, it scales down the style image Oh, we have a question from Susanna. Is Runway ML easier than Colab? I found Runway ML easier. What is your opinion? So yeah, I do have a link to Runway ML in my, my resources here. Runway ML, I feel, is really, really good as sort of a starting point um, to, uh, to play with a lot of different models and get used to like, um, get used to like, oh, this is, this is how I can use machine learning. Um, the thing about Runway ML though is because it is easy to use and you have this like, you know, a very straightforward user interface is a lot of the behind the scenes work of what models they are and how they run is hidden from us. And we don't get a lot of freedom when it comes to like spec specifying like the style scale. Um, for example, the all of the style transfer models that are in Runway, they don't allow you to do multiple style images. Um, you can only do one. And you, yeah. If you're working in Colab, um, you generally have more freedom. It's also hard if you've not coded before. Um, the reason why I chose to do Colab is because once you know how to do Colab, you can go out into the world and use a lot of a lot of collab notebooks that already exist. Um, if you're, if you know Runway, you're just kind of stuck within Runway, stuck with what um, the Runway folks decide to add as features to their application. Um, but if you're out trying to sort of, I don't know, dig through the internet and be like, this model looks cool from this paper, um, it's generally better to, uh, to, to use collab for that. 
um, attribute error int has no attribute value. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what, when are you getting that error? Um, yeah, and to expand a little bit on like collab versus runway, I've linked to this repository that Derek and I maintain, which contains all of these different, each of these is a collab notebook. This is like, I've just given you access to, uh, to this one. This is the thing that we did today. Um, but there are a whole lot of other things you can play with. And now that you know collab and you know how to run cells, um, yeah, there's like, the world is your oyster. There are all these different things you can play with. At the bottom, we there are also some collab notebooks for generating music if you want to um, do other things. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I haven't played with all of these, but a lot of them. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, this page is linked in the slides. It's at the very, very last page. Um, okay, nice. Thanks for linking that. Um, yeah, Ginger, I'm not sure what is happening. Um, I can help you debug later. Um, if you if you message me later. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. All this cool work by everyone. Awesome. Okay, let us reconvene and I'll close this out because we're getting to about time. Um, yeah, things that are important now that all of you have just used artificial intelligence and just used machine learning, it's really important to think, especially if you're like, hey, I just made this thing. I wanna post it on my Instagram. I wanna post it on my Twitter. Um, it's really important to think um, whose work you used, like if you just Googled something and copied it, uh, you're using someone else's image. Um, and think about like ways you can credit them and sort of like not sort of steal their work and labor that they've already done, but give them credit and thank them as people that helped you. Um, especially as you make more and more elaborate pieces and you're thinking about maybe like showing them or posting them in a gallery, um, especially if there's money involved. It's really important to think about um, like the people and the work that you're building on top of. So yeah, like I said, if you're gonna post any of these images, uh, give thanks and tag the relevant people. For example, if you copied images from someone else, uh, hopefully like find them and find a way to like, to, to thank them for that. And another general framing that I find to be helpful when you're posting this stuff online is to frame it as an experiment. Like, hey, I just ran, I just put these two images in this machine learning model and this is what came out. Rather than um, taking it from a perspective of like ownership of like, this is mine, I made this. Um, and, and yeah, basically being like, this is a work of art that I made rather than being like, I was just playing around with these things and this is what came out. And for more regarding um, making AI generated pieces responsibly, um, I, me and a couple colleagues, Emily Selps and Claire Leibowitz on, of Partnership on AI, we made this entire comprehensive guide which is linked in the presentation. Um, Yes, awesome. Yeah, graduating from Runway ML. Um, but yeah, there's a whole comprehensive guide, talks about AI art, how to do it responsibly, and takes you through all the different steps of making a work of AI art from your data set to your model, to your training resources, to publishing, and how to do it in a, respons in a responsible way. And it includes some case studies of people that you know, have done it in a, in a really great way. And yeah, it's sort of, I laid it out. It takes the format of a zine, which I think is really fun and playful. And it contains some best practices at the very end. 
And yeah, now that you guys have, you know, made your first piece of machine learning artwork, um, like like I said earlier, there's a there's a whole repository of Colab notebooks you can play with, um, like Susanna. Yes, yes. Like Susanna mentioned, there's Runway ML, which is um, it's it contains a whole user interface, so it will be a lot easier to use than Google Colab. There are also some fun fun AI games. AI Dungeon is uh, if you guys have ever played a text adventure, it's a text adventure where you type like, I am, I walk up and open the door. Um, but the fun thing about AI Dungeon is it's completely AI generated, meaning um, you can type anything. You can say like, I tell the man um, to open the pot and then it will generate a logical response from that. And it's really cool. Um, and some other fun things. And if after this, you're like, I, I want to know how it all works. Like, I don't want to just make stuff. I want to know how, like, what is actually happening underneath the hood. Um, we have, I've published some links to our class notes, Runway ML for people who, um, you know, don't want to work with Colab yet and want to just play with Runway ML. That's totally valid. And there's a whole class centered around that. And then StyleGAN2, which is another different model, which goes a lot more into the technical details of you know, training your own model um, and yeah, all of, all of that stuff. Cool, and that is it. And I hope you enjoyed my presentation and I hope you continue making stuff and doing it in a responsible way. Thank you. Thank you everybody. And thanks for like participating and being an active audience. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Leah. It was great. I, I wish my computer worked because I was still, I'm still trying to link to the collab folder, but I'm definitely going to play mm -hmm. with it afterwards. But yeah, for sure. it's super fun. It's super fun, especially for a lot of us that aren't technical. And, you know, it, it's, 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 it's a cool way to actually play with the, with the, the code. So thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah. And so you're going to be participating in the AMA afterwards. So I, I'm going to encourage everyone to connect with, with Leah there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Thank, thank you again. Appreciate it. Okay. So